So today's video is sponsored by Brilliance, but more on them later. So the summer is almost over, the school year is starting, and with that we find that we must set goals again for the new year. Achieving our goals can be imagined as Plato did, painting the picture of a charioteer guiding two horses. We are the charioteer, who with intellect and reason guides us towards our goals. But we have to guide two horses. We have our left horse, a spirited horse with courage and bravery. And we have our right horse, which is a passive, has access and desires. Driving the horses will only work when we are in harmony. But how do we achieve that? So today I want to talk to you about the neuroscience behind behavioral change and goal setting. And I will give you some tools, tips and techniques steeped in neuroscience such that you may hopefully reach all the goals that you want for the new school year. So let's dive straight into it. So when we think of setting goals, we are effectively trying to change our behavior. And all behavior can be imagined as on a square. So if we think of the two axes of the square, on the one side we have our motivation to do a certain behavior. So we can be low motivated to do something, for example, cleaning, or highly motivated, for example, eating. And on the other axis we have our skill. So what is our ability to achieve this certain Certain behavior and usually when we look at this square we want to be in this upper corner right so we want to be in novel but complex behavior that is really motivating for us and when we think of complex motivating behavior that we want to do or learn it's usually some type of skill we try to accumulate so it can be for example learning a new instrument or learning a language or it can be that we want to do really well in school so I first want you to ask yourself a question when you look at this square. So if you think of the habit you want to cultivate or the goal you want to achieve, is the reason you are not achieving this goal because you do not have the ability to achieve this goal or that you do not have the motivation. So in neuroscience, in this paper down below, they call the ability to reach something the way to get there and the motivation to do a certain goal or habit the will. So in this video, I will really dive into neuroscience techniques to optimize the way or your skill levels to reach certain goals. And in another video, I will really talk about the neuroscience behind motivation. So look forward to that. So the way of goal pursuit is the set of cognitive skills, capacities, and abilities collectively known as executive function. So executive function is a combination of many skills. It's usually related to attention, working memory, inhibitory control and planning. And collectively, these are known as executive functions. And when we think of executive functions, they play a huge role in goal setting and achievement of certain behaviors, right? Because we usually have to inhibit our access or our desires and we have to really strive towards future planning. So all these higher cognitive functions need to be super sharp for us to be able to achieve certain goals. So the question you may have is how do I increase my executive functions and are my executive functions somehow limited? So today I will answer these questions and I will also give you four tools steeped in neuroscience that can hopefully help you increase or utilize your executive function to the best of your ability. So when you think of executive functions, there are usually three things that keep in mind. It's effortful, it's done consciously, and it is usually for achieving novel type of behaviors. So in general, in neuroscience, executive function has said to be controlled by the prefrontal cortex. Although nowadays in neuroscience, we think more of a network type of structure when we think of certain type of behaviors and how they can be mapped back onto the brain. So the first thing to then consider is, is executive function somehow a limited resource? And the question, if we look at it from a neuroscience or a biological perspective, is probably no. Executive function doesn't have some kind of limited capacity as to how we can use it. Our brain is kind of an endless resource, except for the sense of fatigue and of course getting tired. But mostly people now think that the sense of fatigue is more psychological and less to do with a super specific biological substrate. 
But if our executive function somehow is not a limited resource, how can we optimize for it to reach our goals better? Well, I will give you four tools that I've kind of covered that are in neuroscience and they're also in the papers down below. So if you want to learn a little bit more about the neuroscience behind it, I highly recommend reading the papers, of course. So the first thing is that we usually have two types of operating and one is based on more habits, more direct goals operating and the other is more based on planning. So when you think of your day it's good to separate it into the executor and the planner and I think the planner should be in my regard in the early morning hours because we are usually less limited by fatigue. And then it's said that executive function should be brought to bear on any and all aspects of behavior change, such as goal setting, the benefit from openness to new ideas, broadened attention and a wide survey of possibilities. So if you think of this that you only want to use your executive function or this really deep cognitive reasoning when you are doing your planning and you want to rely on it less when you have to do habitual type of behavior. So to use this I would do A, I would look at to plan your day ahead of time, schedule a time in the week where you will plan your hours and make a list of short but achievable goals. And this is then related to decreasing the decision fatigue such that when you are in the executor mode, you can just execute on the plan that the planner mode has made. So when you look at your day, divide it up into execution and planning. And the second tip, I want to get is that we usually divide a lot of our behaviors and goals into have to's and want to's and what is kind of interesting for this from a psychological perspective is that we have homework for example which is have to's and we have watching tv or talking to friends which are want to's but actually the amount of cognitive effort these two tasks require are quite similar. It's more our perspective on these tasks that make them so tiring. So if you can somehow switch the narrative from behaviors that are right at this moment, have to's to want to's. So for example, if you have to do homework, think why you chose this study or think what motivated you to start doing this in the first place. And that usually allows you to rewrite the narrative that you have set for yourself for that certain type of behavior. And the third thing I want to dive into is in the paper they say, our cognitive bandwidth is precious and operates most efficiently in mental solitude. So this is kind of to say that we want to carve out distraction free time every day where we can really focus on our goals. So if you have a really big goal, try to find a place in your home or a study place where you can really be in the zone as they say and that you have distraction free moments to really focus on your work. So one thing that you could do, which I always talk about, is to break up your work into smaller Pomodoro-like sessions and during those sessions to really not allow yourself to be distracted by anything because this type of distraction is super detrimental to our ability to focus on the goals we have set for ourselves. And the fourth thing of course is habits. So we talked a lot about executive function, but when we think of goal setting and goal striving, we don't only want to rely on our executive function, which is the planner. We also want to be the executor a large part of our time. And a huge thing that can help with this is to cultivate certain habits towards your goals. So if you have read the book, Tiny Habits, which I highly recommend, he talks a lot about having a prompt and the prompt then inspires a tiny behavior and then you have an instant celebration afterwards. So for example, the prompt could be that every morning you drink your coffee and after you drink your coffee, you will read one page of a book and the instant celebration is just to have a little cheer for yourself, for example. And that way you can slowly cultivate the habit of reading more. And instead of every day waking up and relying on your executive function to think like, oh, what do I have to do now? How do I plan for this behavior? What comes next? You can kind of fall back on your habits to really allow you 
to reach your goal a lot faster and not to rely on your executive function only. So I know that a lot of you are working on habits and working towards learning certain science goals, which is me too. And that's why I want to talk a little bit about today's sponsor, Brilliant. So I have been using Brilliant to dive into some of the topics that I love. So one of the courses they have is about quantum computing, which I think is super cool for such an interactive and easy tool. And another course I'm personally diving into right now is the fundamentals of computer science because I never really learned about the fundamentals and the way I do it is that I allow myself to procrastinate on science but only with more science but the procrastination I use has to be fun and kind of gamified so that's why I really like to use brilliant for any time I get bored with my own work I kind of just go on brilliant and learn something new or interesting for the day to get started it for free visit brilliant.org slash charlottefraza or click the link in the description and the first 200 of you will get 20 percent of brilliant's annual premium subscription so instead of being bored on twitter or youtube just play around with brilliance so these were my tips for today and if you have any tips or tools or techniques for me i would love to hear them so put them down in the comments below and otherwise see you next week bye